Hey guys, this is Goodpreet. So today in this video, we're going to talk about Intune app protection policies or mobile application management. The most popular thing with Intune, why people loved Intune in the first place and why it is growing up so fast from other MDMs around. So let's get started. So uh, the reason why Intune uh, is uh, most popular is one of the reasons where people don't have to enroll their device. So users are happy not to enroll the devices, only to you know, download the applications which are required and just enter their corporate credentials and start using their data, corporate data and applications. So all the policies which are sent from the console are only applied to the application. It does not require any enrollment of any devices. So that's why people are happy with that. And let's get started and see how it looks like and uh, the details for the app protection policies. So we quickly go to the app. So this is the device management.microsoft.com. When you go to this page, you specifically land up to the Intune uh, management page. You don't have to go to portal.azure.com and find Intune and, and, and things like that. This is a new uh, URL altogether. So let's quickly go to the applications. So we're going to start and add a new applications and see what all options are available. So let's try out and set an Intune protection policy. So we have a configuration policy. In the coming video, we'll talk about what are configurations. So first of all, uh, with this video, let's talk about the protection policy. So I'm going to just create a new protection policy. Let's suppose we take an example for iOS and iPadOS. So let's keep it as test app policy. That's policy. Um, in the description you want to talk about let's say uh, this is for uh, MS Teams other MS apps so uh, it totally depends on you how you want to set it up this is just for your understanding so for the first thing you get is uh, the option where it says target the device on all types so if we say no we have two options I will show you the options here it says whether it is managed or unmanaged devices so this protection policy can be sent to both devices whether they are enrolled or they are not enrolled so if we talk about managed devices which are enrolled so this policy can be applied there as well with the existing uh, so let's say we have two set of people we have people where it, the company provides the devices and that's enrolled and used by the MDM as well as the MDM feature. Then we have BYOD devices, people who they have uh, who have their own devices. So there, it's only for the application. So, so let's not uh, get into this. Uh, we just keep it as yes uh, because we want to send it to all the devices. So let's select the public application. So as I mentioned, Teams here. Let's see if Teams is available, and here it is. So we have selected the application team. We do have an option to also add custom applications in this uh, app protection policies, which we will save that for later. Uh, custom applications can be any internal applications as well, and we can have app protection policy for them. So let's click on next and see what all options are available there. So now this is the most interesting part here. It says data protection. So in the data protection or data transfer, it will give you the option what it can actually do and what is the restriction on it. Let's talk about if you are able to back up the data on iTunes and iCloud. So if you want to block it, we can just click on block. So from the application, you cannot copy a data and uh, or transfer a data or back up the data. So if you want to send the data from this particular managed app to other application, the other option is to send data from this particular managed application to other applications. So if we say all apps, so they will not be useful, but we have options like policy managed apps. This is more relevant, uh, which we use. We do have option with OS sharing and things like that. But the more relevant is here is policy managed apps. So if we talk about policy managed apps, so MS Teams is policy managed and MS Outlook, let's say we have added, is also policy managed. They can talk and have data interchange in between we can transfer data we can also exempt one of the application which is not in this list so we're going to talk about this later that that's a different text setting altogether do you want them to allow the copies of the data to be saved on the devices we normally keep it as no so if we allow we have an option where it can allow either it can be saved on the OneDrive, sharepoint or the local storage so local storage let's click on no is the app 
is able to receive data from other application here also it should be policy manage applications do you want to restrict the cut copy paste of course that's the option we needed and it should be either blocked or we can do it for policy manage applications any limit if you want to set up the characters so uh, it's really not of use uh, probably you can put 200 2000 that doesn't make any difference because if you don't allow or allow it, it totally depends it there do we allow third party uh, keyboards we can keep yes encrypt data that's required and functionality in sync uh, with the native contact app that's required because the emails are saved there and you will allow them to print uh, we can keep it allow or block our company doesn't allow so we keep it block restrict web content transfer with other application again so here it's talk it's talking about the uh, either it is uh, allowing you to uh, send data to web content uh, using a browser maybe edge or or things like that so we can also have an intune managed browser we can allow in that so we have to set this application first before applying this policy and either it can be an edge or we can allow them to unmanage so normally what we do is uh, not keeping edge but we can also set up intune managed browser and we can add a browser to make it managed so organization data notifications uh, it's allow blogged so it will give you an option there so this is all the data protection settings now we talk about the access requirement now the access requirement is something which is set up for the application if you remember in the very beginning i mentioned that the restriction is actually on the application so if restriction is only on the application and if you want to access that since there is no agent which can control the app management here the app itself manages the access of the application whether it is required to have a pin of course it is it is pin should be numeric or passcode so it can be numeric passcode it should be allow simple pin like one two three zero 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 so we keep it as block minimum pin is four you matter you can keep it six so touch id override biometrics after ping timeout so it is required face id we can allow it number of pin reset after number of days this is basically specify number of days you can that you must pass before you reset the pin okay so yes uh, let's say keep it 90 days that depends on the organization normally they keep it 45 or 90 60 it all depends app pin when device pin is set so it is different from your device pin so this is setting as if your device pin unlocks with some other pin but even if you go to the application it will require a pin so it says yes so credentials required or recheck the access uh, required after a number of inactive minutes so it's set to 30 by default so if you come back after 30 minutes you will have to enter the pin again in the application so let's say conditional launch now this conditional launch gives you a little more uh, flexibility and uh, what all things uh, can be set because since the application is not uh, sync with your AD to have the pin or the credentials and things like that, so it has to have its own settings, right? So here the conditional loss is required. Conditional launch gives you an option, let's say if you enter the maximum attempt of five, you have to reset your pin. You have to probably call the help desk and take help from them. The offline gate period is if you're not using the application for more than 720, that's minutes you have to your access will be blocked okay and if you don't use it for 90 days your data will be wiped on that particular uh, application so this is all uh, resettable we can do this we have few more options we have if we can set a minimum app version which is required or minimum sdk if you have any uh, wrapping on the application if you have any wrapping on the application so these can be changed we can also set device conditions so this is very important where if the device is jailbroken or rooted, we can straight away block those devices. We have also minimum OS version and device model or maximum number of uh, maximum allowed threat level. So threat level is different. Uh, we have that option in the settings in coming videos. We'll talk about that. So let's say if you set up that these are the device models which are available. So we can set so allow to specific and block non-specific. So device mode, this will be more specific because this is more or less going to the bring your own uh, device uh, users, BYOD, so we cannot de determine how many devices they would use. So we normally don't, don't set this. So we can remove this for now. So these are the device conditions, which is also very effective and useful. 
and the next we can talk about where it is assigned so that can be assigned to all the users to a specific group yeah we have different groups for example ad sync admins or maybe a lot of lot of groups we have so this is this is just a setting this is just for illustration purpose i'm going to select this and click on next so this will give you a review that what you have created what policy you have set after that you can do the testing so you can see we have just this is the name the application target device and things like that so this will give you an overview of what you have already set up so see we have almost all the settings which were set up yes and we click on create so once we click on create it takes a while and create the app protection policy so once this policy is applied so whosoever will download microsoft teams on their devices and if they use the company credentials uh, which is the domain.com uh, that will the all the policies will come into the picture and uh, so first and foremost thing for all the admins is to test themselves and to have at least 10 pilot users who are testing this just don't go and just go and put the policies there and always come back and take feedback from them what issues they are facing because it is for BYOD devices primarily and you should have different fleet of devices and the same policy should be set up for Android as well and if you want to see we might have some different option available for Android and Windows 10 so let's quickly take a look what are the differences for Android so I'm just gonna click on next and uh, this is almost the same let's take uh, teams again and click on next all right so not much difference here here it is allowing some Google specific things since it is Android so approved keyboard required and encryption of data and other things this is almost uh, same there are few differences here and there access requirement is almost the same yes there are a few things like touch ID which is not available and uh, face recognition is also not available in Android for now the initial launch is same assignments uh, will be same of course and review all right so so let's let's go back to the policies here here you would have a number of policies so reason to mentioning in the description just to make sure see you can add almost all the Microsoft application in this particular policy but what we recommend is to put set of five applications if not three um, we are doing it for three applications per policy so that we have easy understanding if we face any issues on any of the uh, application or a set of application we know where it's coming from but you can uh, set this as for all the application in one policy or five application in one policy or maybe three uh, that's what I would recommend to get three policies in one application for Microsoft and you can have different application different set of policies for other applications so this is the uh, good thing about uh, Intune app protection policies in the coming videos I'm going to talk about how this policy works uh, I'll try to have a device uh, on the screen which is there side by side we'll install an application and we'll see and how the restrictions of the data protection policy works we'll try to cut copy paste and do other things which which is not allowed and see what messages you get so thanks for your time keep watching subscribe my channel stay tuned Thank you.